to Moments with the Master, Dawn Edition. <laughs> I'm here with uh, Father Josh to talk about the readings for the fifth Sunday in St. Martin's Lent oh. and second Sunday uh, in Advent. Would it be the fifth? Yeah, because last week was the fourth, right? It's the fourth. No, this is the fourth Sunday of St. Martin's Lent, second Sunday of Advent. I know nothing. Anyway, um, the readings for today are Isaiah 40, 1 through 11, 40, colon, 1 through 11, uh, Psalm 85, verses 7 through 13, 2 Peter 3, 8 through 14, with which Father Josh mostly talked about earlier, and Mark 1 through 18. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be looking at pretty much all of them, although I'm not going to read Peter again. Um, the Isaiah 40, 1 through 11 verse is the one that begins, Comfort uh, ye my people, which is one of those ones that has, has been read so much that I think it may have lost some of its potency. Um, but again, looking at it with tectonized, eyes. Um, Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, served her sentence, that the penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord pan double for all her sins. The part that people talk about a lot is a voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. But Which now, this is, is the prophecy of uh, John um, Tizer. Um, what's interesting about that is, I, and I don't know if this is the case for you, but it seems like that the voice that they were expecting, what they're expecting the voice to cry out was uh, repent. And, um, and, and there is, let me skip, skip down a bit. No, mm -hmm. that it is to repent yes. and change your ways and all of that. But that doesn't seem to be what it is. It seems to be that the voice is, you've paid, your term is over. And it is time to rejoice. There is good news. And so we read what the voice is saying. Prepare the way of the Lord. Every valley shall be lifted up. Every mountain and hill made low. And not even ground shall become uh, level. All of this good news. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Uh, a voice says, cry out. And I say, what shall I cry? All flesh is grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers and the flower fades. But the word of our God will stand forever. Um, and then more about the good news. Here is your God. See, the Lord comes with might. His arm rules for him and his reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. Um, now, of course, the message and the message of, uh, well, I'll get back to that. Uh, moving on to the psalm. I, I just I'll, go ahead. I would just love if 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 it's OK just to take a small turn, because I think I think it's valuable in light of what's going on. And I am because I'm with U.S. Army Central Command and Israel is in our area, we are neck deep in what's going on in the Middle East right now, that believing that God established a nation and they are his people um, and that there will be, as it says here, you know, this, you know, he calls to Israel and all this kind of stuff does not mean that everything that national Israel does is okay. In the same way that, you know, not everything that the United States did in response to 9-11 was OK. Um, it, you, can, you can support a nation's existence or their whatever without supporting literally everything that they do. And um, I just, you know, a lot of I know a lot of people that... Um, are, you know, as, because they, you know, Israel's God's people, all this stuff, which is all true. But then they're like, well, you know, you can't say anything negative about what national Israel is doing today. And that's not the case. 
I have not been able to verify that this person exists or that he is a Palestinian pastor, mm-hmm. but I have this quote from Dr. Munther, um, who's supposedly a Palestinian Christian. The irony for us Palestinian Christians is that evangelicals with their overemphasis on prophecy have lost the capacity of being prophetic. You want to prove that the Bible is right? You don't do this by pointing to self-fulfilling prophecy or by pointing to world events as prophecy fulfillment. This is not how you prove that the Bible is right. You prove that the Bible is right by radical obedience to the teachings of Jesus, by proving that Jesus' teachings actually work and that they can make the world a better place. Let us love our enemies, forgive those who sin against us. Let us feed the poor, care for the oppressed, walk the extra mile, be inclusive, not exclusive, turn the other cheek, and maybe, and only maybe then, the world will start to take us seriously and believing in our Bible. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. That was anyway. a little squirrel. <laughs> Except, you know, in the middle of war, that is, I think, the best time to remember. Yes. Christ exists to end war. So Psalm 85, verses 7 through 13, I am uh, going to be, and I apologize, reading from the NIV as I'm using Mommy's uh, Bible. Oh. Yeah. Um, 7 through 13. She actually started, she underlined verse 1, which is, you showed favor to your land, O Lord. You restored the fortunes of Jacob. You forgave the iniquity of your people. You covered all their sins. You set aside your wrath and turned from your fierce anger. And she wrote beside it, after the lay renewal, thank you, Jesus. Um, But skipping down to verse 7, show us your unfailing love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. I will listen to what the Lord, what God the Lord will say. She circled this part. His, he promises peace to his people, his saints, but let them not return to folly. And then continuing, surely his salvation is near to those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Love and faithfulness meet together. Righteousness and peace kiss each other. Faithfulness spring forth from the earth and righteousness looks down from heaven. I actually really do love that psalm. Uh, that we've talked about this it, before about them have the kiss righteousness and peace kiss. Um, but that again, that image of because I think that oftentimes we say that righteousness and war kiss because if you're righteousness, then if you're righteous, then you have to go to battle. Um. Anyway, uh, you read the. Peter verse. Um, so this is Paul, I'm sorry, Mark 1 through 8, but I'm going to read 1 through 11. Um, and there's a whole lot of, this is a genealogy thing, but there's a point. Um, here is written Jesus' bloodline. This is also from the English Bible, who is the son of David, son of Abraham. Abraham became the father of Isaac. Isaac became the father of Jacob. Jacob became the father of Judah and his brothers. Judah became the father of Perez. Reading Mark. Mark. There's no genealogy in Mark. Interesting. I wonder why this is on here then. Good news of Mark. Matthew. The overbringing of the holy book. The good news is written by Mark. Oh, well, okay. I'll do it from this one then. So I'm not this. So this one on the website's not right. I wonder why they have that there. Okay. Um, this is the beginning of Jesus Christ, God's Son's Gospel, as it is written in the prophets. Lo, J. I'm guessing Jesus. Uh, send my messenger before thy face, who prepareth. Uh, the ways before the this is the crier's voice in the wilderness prepare ye uh, the Lord's way make straight his paths so this is an obvious reference to the Isaiah verse right did you say J yeah it's probably what is it in yours like Yahweh says oh, that's probably I it. send my messenger it's, it's God speaking okay there's a whole lot of, like all of the you can't really see it but all of the these and vowels and everything, it's a it's a Y with a tiny little vowel on top of it. Uh, because they're trying to save space, I assume. It's kind of mm. cool looking. I don't know if you can 
no, you really. can't. Um, uh, John was watching in the wilderness, and there he preached the washing, the washing of repentance, uh, is what they use instead of baptism, uh, for the forgiveness of sins, and all the country of Judah and the Hierosolomites. Yeah, Jerusalem. Interesting. The Jerusalemites uh, came unto him, and all were washed uh, of him in the Jordan. Uh, Jordan the River, acknowledging their sins. John was appareled with camel's hair and with a leather girdle about his loins, and he ate locusts and wild honey, and he preached us. Um, my stronger, my stronger cometh after me, the latchet of whose shoe I am not worthy to bow down and loose. I have washed you with water, but he shall wash, wash you with the Holy Ghost. And it happened at the at that time. Well, that's it. That That's the whole passage. That's it. Okay. He will wash you with so, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. So it makes actually a lot of sense why people associate the Isaiah verse with repentance. So here, uh, I do think that. But so, but go ahead and finish your thought. And then I got something to throw in. That's a pretty long thought. Go ahead. Well, so yes, yes, but like if you stop it there, but if you read the whole passage, it's repentance that then comes out in righteous living. And everybody likes to stop there about the repentance and feeling sorry. But here, I mean, repentance is definitely tied to confession. So it's not just, I feel bad for what I did but I actually verbally tell people this is what I did wrong. And then as you read the rest of the passage, it's connected with John telling various groups of people like, like tax collectors, you know, don't collect any more than you absolutely have to don't defraud people, you know, and if you've done that return and all this kind of stuff. So it's, it's repentance tied to holy living, not just, well, Feet that's see, are. that's the thing. The problem is that um, the word repentance has in the word itself the idea that you are turning away, uh, that sh that you were walking one direction and now you were walking a different direction. Right, but we don't um, and use it like that anymore. Sadly, well, no, there was, and you can see an initial, you can see a progression from the yeah. idea of repentance. Just seriously, dude, hold up. <laughs> uh, the initial idea of of repentance just as um, changing your mind right although changing or even changing your mind is a big idea of feeling sorry as you said of, of feeling bad that you did something uh, that that was all that was needed you change your mind or you feel sorry for it. You get baptized. There may or may not actually be a change of behavior to, and, but that at least that change of that sorrow for sin and baptism was necessary for uh, being a Christian to today when I would, I would say that the evangelical voice today his orange majesty <laughs> won't even acknowledge the uh, uh, sorrow for behavior. There's not even uh, that, that, that to apologize for anything, even to God weakness. is a sign of weakness um, to, to the point where the, this person said, uh, Sure, I'm a Christian, but I didn't feel like I needed to repent or apologize for anything that I've done. Uh, and you can you can see how the one idea led to the other. So going from the Isaiah first verse, which you know, again, obviously a reference to John the Baptist, but there they had been punished. And the good news was your punishment is over and it is time for peace and rejoicing and return. Um, that they, 
that 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 the punishment had led already led to the repentance that the people of Israel living in uh what was it called uh the 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 kicking out is what the English Bible calls it the kicking out to Babylon <laughs> um that or out kicking anyway um you're not making my life easier. Let me have it back, please. Let's try it over here. Okay. Oh my God. <laughs> um, okay, please, my glasses is still working. Let's see if I can get this done before. My entire life is just. It's just a mélange of cats on the on the screen, and that's all you can see. And, of me and broken cats at that. It's like and a broken symbol, cats. It's a symbol of who we should be as followers of Christ. We welcome. We are the island of cats. Here's a here's a here's a question uh, before you finish your thought. So if if the whole message of John and and Isaiah, you know prophesied by or fulfilled by John partially was um you know your 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 iniquity is done and your your sorrow is past and all this stuff if if Israel I think I've heard this said before I mean this is all speculation but if the people of Judea in Jesus day had received Jesus as their Messiah in that moment because their iniquity was done and all of that stuff, that would have been it. There would have been another 2,000 years of human history. That would have been that would have been it. Christ would have set up his rule and reign on earth. He still would have died. He would have died and resurrected, but they would have received mm. him as Messiah. I got you, I got you. Okay. And then he would have immediately established his kingdom on earth and all of this other stuff would have come to pass whereas now because they chose to reject him the, it delayed the fulfillment of that your iniquity is accomplished and your sorrow is complete and all that and and if that's the case you know how much you can go either way with this either how much does god value our freedom to choose or how much does our freedom to choose influence how God interacts with us anyway? I'm sorry. That was just the thought that came into my head. <laughs> I know it's um, well, uh, you can see through the other verses that uh, repentance is that repentance is still needed, that the punishment is not done and the punishment is not done not because we haven't um paid enough because that is that is the idea that i have heard the most when growing up was that there is not enough punishment even for the smallest of sins each one deserves eternal torture um but but what i prefer and think is more biblical uh, is the ideas presented in that movie, The Mission, where um, hello, uh, have you seen that? Oh gosh, yes, I love that movie. Uh, where the penance is a sign that he is to drag his armor up a waterfall, um, and he doesn't necessarily need the guy to do that, but the guy needs to do that. He needs the experience of doing something so that he can get to a point where he can feel the sorrow and feel God's forgiveness. And he can hear the word of rejoicing and return. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that um, where there is a society anymore because there is no, there's not even sorrow for sin anymore. All there is is no, this we idea we celebrate that, our sin. Mm -hmm. Including those people who most trumpet themselves as the godly. Yes. Stop it. Well, I'm just, I, it, it is, it's this whole thing of 
first of all, it's just this constant, this constant drumbeat of people getting caught doing whatever, fill in the blank, like Christian leaders, right? Like high profile Christian leaders. And anytime it happens, I rarely see, I, I'm, I don't want to name, I don't want to throw anybody under the bus because I'm not saying that they are not Christians per se. There was some, somebody who, um, major ministry and apologist who um, f- died and then it came out, I mean, dozens of women who, oh, yeah. And, um, and the family is pushing back against this hard. And I understand why I would feel sort of the same way, but I, you know, I think there's value in saying, you know what? Yes. This person did this stuff, but they also did this and this was not okay. And there's, there's value in truth. Yes. It's the speaker, speaker for the dead. thing. <laughs> and and people don't like that. Marilyn doesn't like that. And I love my wife and there's, there is nothing wrong, but she has a really hard time. It's so funny. Like just recently, um, even with her own father, um, being able to admit that he was not a saint. Um, she has a really hard time saying true things about people. And I think there's just power in saying this, this person did this or struggled with this or whatever. And yet God's grace is sufficient. There's, um, for the people that care about me, uh, I tend to shit on myself a lot, kind of, uh, self-deprecatingly kind of tongue in cheek, but also, you know, somebody will say something and uh, nice about me and I will um, redirect it into some kind of slam about my past and my legal status and all of that. And it annoys people and or makes them sad that, yeah, I mean, you know, the honesty about that, um, there's this, have you ever What's his name? Um, the guy who, the guy who sings uh, "I Repent," Derek Webb. Do you know his music at all? I'm sure I've heard it. I know who he is. Okay, can't come up with one of the songs off my head. Right? He, he. I mean, there's one song where he go. The chorus is, "I am a whore. I do confess. I put you on just like a wedding dress, and I run down the aisle, hmm. uh, singing to Jesus." <clears throat> There's another one. I repent. I repent uh, of trying to live America's dream. There's the line in our suburb, living safe and uh, no, it, living in our suburbs where we're safe and white. Um, but he begins in, in this particular album, he begins each song with like saying something. And he said, I, I wish that we all walked around with like a ticker over our heads just with all of our worst sins just scrolling there so that we could just get over that so that all of our all of our stuff was out there for everybody else to see we could quit hiding and we could quit pretending and it might actually make repentance possible because and I I can't remember what I was watching the other day yesterday in fact that we are more than the worst thing we've ever done. That's what God. Uh, and again, it is. And that that's part of all of these verses. Um, if nothing else, the more that we are is loved by God. Mm-hmm. But, um, but also he desires to make us into the more than the worst thing we've ever done. Yeah. Rather than again, that image of that's exactly what we are and thus will be punished eternally for it. Or that uh, anyway. I am. And so I should embrace it and make this my central identity. Right. He agrees. <laughs> okay. Um, that's it for me. Anything else? I don't have anything else. Okay. Uh, name of the. Yes. 
Okay. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I give you my heart, my soul, and my strength. Make me a good man. Yeah.